At Online Med Ed, we walk you through every topic in detail so you're ready for the boards and the wards. Impulse control disorders are very similar to anxiety disorders. In this case, there's going to be some stressor, some trigger that causes this impulse that's almost incontrollable to commit an action. Which action is committed helps determine the disorder. There is a buildup of anxiety and there's relief of that anxiety or sexual arousal when the action is committed. The reaction is going to be different in each disorder and very much like I do for the rest of this course, we're going to say this disorder does, this disorder doesn't, and of course there could be more of a blend. These are also disorders which can be paralleled to crimes and are a great source of malingering and how you actively pursue whether this is a psychiatric disorder or someone just lying. Let's start off with what impulse disorders in general showing the parallels to anxiety. All right, so there is some stressor. And that is going to be anxiety inducing. It causes some impulse to commit the action. When the person commits the action, there is a reduction in that anxiety. There is relief. Or there may even be an increase in sexual arousal. You're going to see how each of these disorders are going to play on that response. And that's exactly it. After the action is committed, how the person feels is important to implementing whether this is the psychiatric disorder or just someone committing a crime. This is going to be variable based on the disease. Let's start with intermittent explosive disorder. In this case, the stressor can be anything. Usually it's a violation of personal space or an emotional or psychological attack, someone being aggressive. The action that reduces the anxiety brought on by that stressor is violence. And almost always, the degree of violence is disproportionate to the stressor. Violent acts usually involve physically harming or destroying or simply yelling at an object or a person. Violence implies that men are more susceptible than women, which is true. And as I said, in anxiety, women usually have anxiety disorders more often. So when it's more prevalent in men, it's worth mentioning and paying close attention to. And it decreases with age. But there's a timing associated with it. And there's two forms. There's the mild form, which involves no harm. And harm really means to a person or to a living creature. Harm to an object, not so much, but the severity of the injury, like bulldozing a house with a tractor, might, might be seen as harm. And there is severe. And in severe, there is harm. In the mild form, if no harm is involved, you should see two outbursts per week that continue for three months. In the severe form, if there is harm, then you should see three times ever over the course of 12 months. I'm showing you as two separate diseases, mild and severe, because that's how they are listed in the way of timing. But of course, it's more of a spectrum, how much harm is done, how much damage is done to the object of the person. And to give you some examples, right, if you get cut off while driving on the highway, some people yell at the steering wheel. That's probably not intermittent explosive disorder. At least I hope not, otherwise I've got it. But if you get cut off and then follow the person to their home, and then when they get out of the car, beat the crap out of them, that would be considered fairly severe. So if that happens more than three times in a year, 
that person probably has the disorder. It's the severity of the action in response to the stressor, and that action needs to be violent in order to be intermittent explosive. And the motivation is anxiety reduction. That person basically can't help it. The diagnosis is clinical. And here, there's not really a crime to rule out. I mean, assault, you are assaulting them. Um, and, it's, and as long as it's not someone being a contract killer or trying to destroy property for another reason, then intermittent explosive disorder usually is contained within itself. And here's where we talk about treatment. We used to think SSRIs would work. You can still try them. We used to think group therapy works. But for all of these impulse control disorders, what we believe now is there's really no benefit to medications, and there's really no benefit to therapy there might be on an individual basis, and someone might be taught to control the disorder, and so we try these things. But essentially what we know now is medications is just as useless as therapy, is just as useless as combo therapy in all comers. What you're gonna need to do is establish a relationship with a person and figure out something that works for that person. There's no right answer on the test because most of the time, these things don't work. So the question is, do you need to incarcerate? Well, generally, in intermittent explosive, if someone has the mild form, they're just yelling a lot, ah, they probably don't need to be incarcerated. But if it's severe, where they're hurting people or destroying lots of property, the answer is going to be yes. How you decide is going to be up to the severity of the injury or the, the damage, and it's going to be left up to law enforcement, not the doctor. You are going to notice that they have intermittent explosive because they are have anxiety induction by the stressor and violence is their outlet. Can't really treat it, so if it's severe, just gotta jail them. The second is kleptomania. Now, idiomatically, we use that word klepto to mean anyone who steals anything, but as you'll learn, it's not the case at all. The pathology here is that some stressor, which is usually the site of the object, induces this compulsion to steal. The action, the impulse, is stealing. This occurs most commonly in women rather than men. And these women steal things. But there's something very specific about this disorder which characterizes it as the disorder and not just theft. They steal things with little or no value. And it's usually something she can afford. And having stolen something of little or no value that she can afford, she probably doesn't even want, afterwards, the reaction is guilt or remorse. Here's the thing, though. The theft itself caused reduced anxiety. That's why she stole in the first place. She stole the thing because the theft at that exact moment reduced anxiety, but oftentimes these women are faced with remorse and guilt. They didn't want to steal, they had to. And so what you'll see from that guilt and remorse is either gifting, giving it to someone else, high hoarding, that is, they hide it away never to use it again, or simply returning it. And interestingly, if you return it, for whatever reason in kleptomania, the anxiety doesn't return. So if someone is caught stealing, you have to, of course, rule out the petty theft. We talk more about this in a table in your notes, but a kleptomania patient generally steals impulsively, without plans, without help, and feels guilty about it. Someone who stole because they wanted the thing, plans it, has help, and then will actually use the item or object because she wanted it in the first place. The treatment here, as we've learned, <clears throat> medications, just as bad as therapy, just as bad as combo. And the question is, do you need to incarcerate? Generally, the answer is no, because the things she steals have little value. She feels bad about it, and you can even coach her with therapy to give it back. You may not be able to coach her with therapy to prevent the theft, but you can, you can coach her how to deal with the remorse and give the item back. And with an explanation of the disease, usually it's no big deal. If someone steals something of high value that they can't afford and then use it or wear it, probably not kleptomania. 
And lastly is pyromania. And this one's a bit different because in the pathology, there really isn't a stressor. There's nothing that increases anxiety. Pyromania is the lighting of fires to increase sexual arousal. And they may feel the same anxiety and the impulse to do this, but the action is just the same as the stressor. They want to do it because they like it. Patients are more often men, more so than women. Again, the violence and destruction typically associated with men, and they must do it more than once. Two or more occasions of setting fires. And their motivation is either to decrease anxiety, which is possible because it's an impulse control, but really it's to increase sexual arousal. Now when you catch someone lighting fires, what you need to do is decide, is this arson? And the main difference, and again we have a table in the notes, is the motivation. If someone is setting fire to something because they want to kill somebody, that's arson, attempted murder. If they're setting fire to something because they're having a disproportionate reaction to a stressor, that's intermittent explosive disorder. If they're setting fire to collect insurance, that's malingering or fraud. The person who sets fires because they like it, that person's a pyromaniac. And as we've said, medication's just as useless as therapy, just as useless as combo therapy. The question is, do you need to incarcerate? Again, the question is generally going to be based on law enforcement. Are they burning blocks of wood in a barrel out on their own property, or are they setting fire to banks? But generally, because there's so much destruction at risk to others, those who can't be controlled often do end up getting incarcerated for damage. So I wanted you to see that impulse control disorders are very similar to anxiety disorders and will have a lot of parallels to obsessive compulsive disorders. There's something that provokes anxiety, and doing an action relieves that anxiety. In intermittent explosive, it's committing violent acts. It's usually men. In kleptomania, it's stealing something, usually women, and they steal stuff they can afford of little to no value, but they feel remorse afterwards. In pyromania, it's usually not reduction of anxiety, but instead stimulation of sexual arousal, and it's lighting of fires. That is the impulse control disorders.